Hey out there, legal warriors. What to expect when you're expecting to be charged with a crime or you're worried about that? You ever wonder how it works? How is someone going to learn that they've got to go to court, that they have a criminal problem they need to deal with? Well, if you're interested in that area of the law, stay tuned because this is the video for you. My name is attorney Lance Fryer and I'm a defense attorney in Linwood, Washington. My law firm has been defending people charged with crimes all throughout Washington State for more than 20 years. And I'm putting out these videos to help educate the public. So if you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. Now just jumping right into it. We get questions all the time. It's like, hey, how am I going to know if I'm charged with a crime and I'm supposed to go to court? And so there's several ways that could happen. And what's the obvious way? Well. The obvious way is that a police officer uh, arrests somebody and charges them, charges them with a crime themselves. How does that work? Well, um, certain types of police officers are authorized to actually fill out criminal complaints and file them with the court themselves. And this would be for non-felony offenses, in other words, DUIs, domestic violence, theft, stuff like that, non-felonies, and typically only city police officers. And there's reasons for that, but basically the jurisdiction of the officers. But one way you can determine you're charged with a crime is an officer either arrests you and officially charges you with the crime, or the officer gives you a, a citation that, and you have to look at it closely, it's complicated, that tells you to appear at a certain court in a certain time. What's the officer do with their copy of the citation? Well, they file it with the court themselves. And so in some cases, you know you're charged with a crime because the officer actually initiated official criminal proceedings against you. Now, Lance, that's confusing. Yes, it's confusing because there's another situation um, that also seems similar but is not exactly the same. We have to remember that um, police officers are only empowered to charge you with the crime if their prosecutor says so, right? So in some cases, if it's state patrol or sheriff, or if it's a felony, an officer cannot charge you with the crime. When I say charge, I mean file a criminal complaint into court. They can only arrest you for investigation of a crime. And so sometimes if we get pulled over for a DUI or we get arrested for an assault outside of an incorporated city limits, in other words, a sheriff or a state patrol person, then they can only arrest you for investigation and then put you in the jail, and then you're still not charged with a crime yet, believe it or not. There's a process that has to happen for a prosecutor to review the case and determine whether or not they're going to file a criminal complaint against you. And the court rules say that there are only three court days that somebody can be held that is arrested for investigation of a crime without an actual complaint being filed against them. So sometimes people get arrested by the county or by a state trooper or for investigation of a felony, even by a city police officer. And that officer cannot file a complaint actually starting a criminal proceeding in earnest against someone. They can only arrest them for investigation. And so if that, off, if that prosecutor who's in charge of reviewing the file decides it doesn't meet our standards to rush file within three court days based upon either case strength or weakness, based upon their caseload, well then the suspect has to be released and then they're just sitting around waiting to find out what's gonna happen. And oftentimes they get confused and uh, think that the case is over when it's not. So that's gonna jump on to number two. What's the second way that you can learn you're charged with a crime? Well, the second way is those situations where the officer doesn't have the authority or chooses not to file a complaint against you into court. Instead, um, it's up to the prosecutor to decide. And so uh, let's just lump them all together here to begin with. When it's the prosecutor's decision about whether or not you get charged, that's a case again where the officer did not file a complaint charging you with the crime or doesn't have the authority to do so, then it basically it's gonna be at a prosecutor's office. If you get arrested in Snohomish County, it's gonna be at the Snohomish County prosecutor's office most likely. King County, it's probably gonna be at the King County prosecutor's office. And what do I mean by that? Well, there's people that are attorneys that are hired by the counties to provide 
the prosecution services to prosecute crimes. And so some charging prosecutor is going to have a stack of files and eventually they're gonna get around to the, to the file of the suspect in question and they're gonna make a determin determination, am I gonna charge a crime or not? If they charge a crime, then what happens is they're gonna uh, fill out a criminal complaint saying, I accuse Mr. Smith of driving under the influence on June 1st, 2022. That criminal complaint gets filled out accusing Mr. Smith of something, and then the prosecutor signs it because they have the authority as the attorney for the prosecution to charge people with the crime. But it doesn't really matter until that complaint that the uh, prosecutor fills out and signs gets filed into a court. Once it gets filed into a court, there's gonna be court staff that processes the complaint and puts it in the computer and then generates a summons. And so that's the second way you can learn your charge with a crime is you get sent a summons by the court that was initiated by the prosecutor reviewing a police report. So you'll get something in the mail telling you, hey, Mr. Smith, you've been charged with DUI. We command you to appear for arraignment for that charge on a certain date and a certain time and in a certain court. And so if you've uh, been stopped by a police officer, if you've been investigated by a police officer, if you uh, believe, uh, if you got arrested and then you didn't get officially charged, um, then you need to be watching the mail because the official way you learned your charge with a crime, you'll learn that, is by a summons from the court. Now there's different ways that courts do it, but it's typically you'll get a mailing from the court and there's not gonna be a lot of time because when a case is filed, the court is required under the court rules to set your arraignment date within 14 days of the date the case was filed. So let's take it takes a day or two for the court to process it and issue the summons and put it in the mail. It takes several days to get to your home. Let's hope you're checking your mail and you see it. You might have court the next day or a couple days from now. Best case, you're gonna be seven days from court probably. So if you believe you might be charged with a crime, you need to be checking your mail. So let's just take one step back. And remember I said there are all those situations where you get arrested and you're not officially charged yet. That's a felony case or a county police officer making the arrest. And so you get this piece of paperwork. It says, hey, my case is dismissed. I think it's all done. And you know, this is one of the biggest pitfalls in criminal law, um, the way Washington operates is that you sort of get told uh, in court that the case is dismissed and you may not hear a part or they may not tell you that that doesn't mean the case is over because the prosecutor still has up until the statute of limitations to make a decision about whether or not they're going to charge you with the crime. And um, nowadays it might take six months or 12 months or even longer just due to backup and in, in how long cases are taking post COVID. I'm filming this in October of 2022. Post COVID things are taking a long time. So don't suffer from the mistake that you think um, it's over because you sort of got told that. Well, it's, it's only over if the prosecutor makes the decision to decline to file your case. So moving on to the third way you can find out, the third way you can find out you've been charged with a crime is you get arrested because there's a warrant for your arrest. So how would that happen, Lance? Well, you may hear police officers say, hey, turn yourself in or I'm gonna get a warrant for you. And almost always that's not true. It's very, very rare that a police officer will get a warrant on a case that's uncharged. He's gotta be a fugitive, stuff like that. In 30 years of doing this, I've seen it once. And really what the officer's saying is, you know, I'm gonna file a case on you and if you don't show up, then the court's gonna issue a warrant. But you would have a chance to show up uh, for the most part. But the way you might uh, find out you're charged with a crime is you get arrested for a warrant. In other words, uh, you made that mistake, you didn't realize that the case wasn't over, you thought you didn't need to worry about it, you moved, you didn't check your mail, um, something went wrong and you never show up for your court date. Even if a court sends a summons to the wrong address, if they think it's the right address, when you don't appear, they're gonna issue a warrant for your arrest and it happens all the time. So what do you need to do? Well, what you need to do, if you have the ability to do so, is get yourself an attorney to help you with this pre-charging situation. Because most of us attorneys, if we're doing a good job, we have access to some computer systems. It costs money, but it's part of business. 
to sort of put your name to the computer and watch for a charge. There's no like official thing that covers everything, but most of it can be covered in Washington State through the, the judicial information system. Um, and there's also something called jabs out there uh, that some attorneys have access to. But if we watch it diligently, there's a good chance we're gonna pick up a charge, even if you're out of town or you're moved or something like that. What can we also do? Well, an attorney can also get a hold of the prosecutor's office from time to time and just check in with the front desk and see, has there been a decision on your case? Has there been a decision not to prosecute you? Because the only way you'll ever know is if someone gets a hold of the prosecutor's office. Prosecutors do not send notices to suspects saying we're not charging you. I've never seen it. Um, occasionally, some places will send a notice to an alleged victim. If it's like a domestic violence case, hey, we chose not to charge. I have seen that in the city of Seattle. But for the most part, you just kind of have to be in, uh, you know, uh, out in the air just waiting, you know, in, in Never Neverland, not understanding what's going to happen unless you get someone to help you. So what have we learned? Well, one way you can learn your charge is instantly the officer files a complaint and you've got an arraignment right away. That's for city-based non-felony cases. Um, what's another way? Well, um, you get a summons sent to you from the court after a prosecutor fills out a criminal complaint. And what's the worst way to find out? You get arrested on a warrant because you never knew about any of this, right? So. Uh, I hope you found this useful. I want you to be careful out there. Do not ever assume that something's over unless you get legal help letting you know it's over. We want to assume things over, but oftentimes it's not. And if you need some legal help out there, feel free to reach out to my firm. Again, my name's Lance Friver. We've been doing this for more than 20 years. We'll listen to what happened. We'll identify a way forward, and we will be there for you. Thank you.